depending on where you're at this year, alfalfa may be one of the more valuable crops that you have. However, that value can be quickly degraded by an insect outbreak. We'll talk about some alfalfa insects today. Well, first of all, let's talk about scouting. I don't care what crop it is. We just really encourage you, please, 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 do more scouting. It's one of the funny things as we're talking to a lot of the really high yield farmers and we often will ask them, okay, what are you doing and what, what are your secrets and everything else? Invariably, almost everybody says, well, I'm just out in the field a lot. Spend more time in the field and scout, especially if you're gonna be making another trip out there for something else, weed control, foliar feeding, spraying a fungicide, whatever it is, you can throw insecticide in with almost anything else when you're going to go out and scout, use a sweep net. By using a sweep net, you can find some of these little insects. You just sweep back and forth a few times and then take a look inside that net and see what you've got for bugs. Very simple and easy way to scout. That's something Darren and I will do quite commonly too, whether it's wheat or soybeans or like we're talking about today, alfalfa, it's using a sweep net. Unfortunately, Brian, one of the things that I see from too many growers that I've met over the years that is that their scouting is, well, I'm looking across the field and you know what? I kind of see a gray looking haze. That doesn't look right. Well, what it is, is oftentimes alfalfa weevil larvae just devastating the crop. You don't want to wait until it gets to that point because you've really lost a good share of primarily your first cutting with that particular insect, but it could be any cutting during the season with one of the insects we'll talk about today. With alfalfa weevil larvae, I get a lot of questions about that, a lot of calls, and people just right away say, hey, I've got alfalfa weevil. And I go, wait a second, do you have the weevil, that's the adult stage, or do you have the larvae, that's the worm stage, the young stage, and the worms are much easier to control. When you've got the actual weevil out there, they have a hard coat, it's really difficult to get them stopped, absolutely you're gonna need the full rate of any insecticide you use, and even then it might not be perfect control. But those worms, they're easy to stop. The whole thing is you've gotta scout and then you gotta spray timely. So stopping those bugs in alfalfa requires you to get really good coverage. It might take a few more gallons than you normally would use, especially if that crop has a little bit of size to it. You may be upping the gallons per acre to 15 or 20 gallons per acre trying to get good coverage. You may also want to use a little bit smaller droplet and more pressure to try and push it down in through that canopy because like Brian had mentioned, these are small little worms. You want to get good coverage. That's the best way to stop them. Now for me, Personally, I don't worry that much about coverage with a lot of insecticides because the bugs move around. It's whole different than disease, for example, where you spray a fungicide and the fungicide won't move in the plant and the disease can cover the entire plant. It's just, I don't know, I just, I don't worry as much about coverage as Darren probably does, but the key thing is just spraying timely. If you can spray a little bit earlier, you're much ahead. The smaller the bug, typically the easier it is to control. Another kind of pest that we see early in the season in alfalfa is aphids. And there's a number of different aphid species that you may find out there. So if you want to, you can get out and try and identify which particular aphid it is. I don't really care which aphid it is. I just want to get them stopped in my field because they're piercing and sucking insects. They're going to take the juice and the nutrition out of those leaves. I don't want them out in my field and you can have multiple generations. So we want to get in front of them. However, one of the challenges that has happened over the last decade or so is we're seeing less reliable control from the pyrethroids, which are the most commonly used class of insecticides in alfalfa. Well, I don't know if I would agree with Darren on that one either, because I would just say, I've never seen fantastic control out of the pyrethroids on aphids. I don't care if it was 20 years ago or it was today, you have to use the full rate of your pyrethroid. Otherwise, you're just not gonna expect great control. Now, you can switch over to chlorpyrifos or Lorsban. That will give you typically a little better control. It's just when you throw Lorsban together with certain herbicides or fungicides, now you're gonna see a little bit more leaf burn. And you will definitely see a little more leaf burn when you put that Lorsban with foliar fertilizer. We do also talk about some newer chemistry like Safina and Transform that are labeled in certain crops. Make sure you check the labels to see if they're specifically labeled for other crops you may grow on your farm like alfalfa. And the problem with Safina and Transform, they aren't gonna control much other than aphids. So if you've got, let's say grasshoppers or potato leaf hoppers, I mean, some other insect that's going to 
attack your alfalfa, you're probably going to need either that chlorpyrifos, lorsban, or you're going to need one of the pyrethroids. Well, you mentioned leafhoppers, and that's another insect that we see a lot of scouting from the road. Hey, I see some yellow out there in certain areas of my alfalfa. Must have some hopper burn from some leafhoppers out there. Again, do your scouting on a regular basis in your alfalfa crop, and don't wait for the next cutting. That's a common mistake that I hear. Well, you know, we're only a couple weeks away from the next cutting. That'll probably wipe them out. No, don't give up. Go after them now. Use insecticides and check what the pre-harvest intervals are to make sure that you're okay. And if you've got that window of seven to 14 days before you're going to cut and harvest, get the bugs wiped out. That way your regrowth on that next crop will be so much faster. Well, once again, we would really encourage you on a very regular basis in your alfalfa, or for that matter, any crop you've got, get out in the field, use a sweep net, do some scouting, identify the insects. If you don't know what bug it is, talk to your local agronomist or extension agent. And then if you do have insects, the good news here is it's very inexpensive to spray. Usually the pyrethroids are gonna cost two bucks. If you get to uh, chlorpyrifos, it's around four bucks. And even if you had to use, let's say, Safina or Transform, if you ever decide to use that in the future, you're talking around $6 an acre. So fairly inexpensive to control insects, and these products are pretty effective on most every bug out there. Well, controlling bugs is one thing, but stopping our weed of the week is another. We'll show you how to do it coming up next.